The recent Pimax Play software update introduced GPU image upscaling. It's a feature I made good use of in my RTX 5080 and Pimax Crystal Light 7 Racing Games tested video, and it helped me achieve a solid 90 FPS across all the games I tested while still maintaining good visuals. I realised how incredibly effective GPU image upscaling was at the time, and I felt it deserved its own follow up video, so here we are. You have the option of NVIDIA Image Scaling or AMD FSR. I'll be using NVIDIA's Image Scaling or NIS for short with my RTX 5080. When used, it boosts the frame rate by rendering the image at a lower resolution, then upscales it, along with some added image sharpening. It's not the same as DLSS that performs image upscaling using AI modeling and arguably gives better results than this, but in principle has the same purpose, upscaling to improve the frame rates. Plus, NIS has the benefit of working with any game that doesn't support DLSS, such as almost all VR titles. So the task I have set out is testing and demonstrating the upscaling performance to see how well it helps us out. My game of choice today is Automa Blister 2. To kick off, let's see how the game copes without using any upscaling. Keep your eyes peeled on the frame rate, the GPU memory and the GPU usage. To begin with, I'm only aiming to maintain a stable 90fps, so I have capped the crystal light at 90hz. We will get around to raising this to 120hz later in the video, and that, to be fair, does look like a long way off looking at the frame rate here. We're bouncing around the 70s here and the inconsistency of the frame rates through the headset view makes the image appear incredibly choppy. It's not pleasant at all and it's more difficult to drive accurately. The GPU is basically maxed out. The only positive takeaway is the picture sharpness and detail is excellent but we can't seriously race like this because the stuttering is completely distracting. This is not something that comes through these recordings, so you just have to take my word for it. Um, anybody who uses VR will understand, um, but we do need some help here, so uh, let's move on. There are four upscaling toggles, quality, balanced, performance, and custom. We'll start off with quality, the preset that applies the least amount of upscaling. There's an instant increase to the frame rate, also the VRAM usage is slightly lower. The GPU is still being worked hard, getting up to 98%, but very noticeably for me is the game is running smoothly, far better than before. At the beginning of the race, the cars are tightly packed. The frame rate isn't holding perfectly to 90. I'm getting a slight sense of stutter now and again when it hits the low 80s but it's completely manageable. I'm also recording with OBS at 60 frames per second on this PC, so I'm taking a small performance hit. A solid 90 FPS is achievable while not recording, so that is worth saying too. After a lap or so and the car spread out, we're pretty much sticking to 90 for the rest of the race here. As for the image sharpness and detail, it's still very well maintained, and very little difference I can tell between NIS quality upscale or when it's turned off. At times I can observe a fine amount of shimmer around some edges, otherwise the picture still looks very good. This first test alone already demonstrates a worthwhile uplift in gaming performance, making the game playable when previously it was not. Balanced upscaling next, and if we want to hit that 120 FPS, then we do need to look at leaning on a high level of upscaling. I'm sticking to 90 hertz just for now, so you can see how this affects the GPU. Obviously, 90 FPS is absolutely a non-issue here. Right from the get-go, regardless of how many cars are in view, my 5080 is not breaking a sweat. Less VRAM is used, and a good portion of the race is not breaking past 80% GPU usage. Also noticeable is it's using less power, 50 or 60 less watts than before. The image is slightly softer, but still retains good detail because the sharpness filter that's applied to the image does a good job at compensating. The sharpness filter is applied automatically, but you can manually adjust that. I'm using the sharpness filter level that Pimax has already baked into the presets, as they do seem to be appropriate. The graphics are completely acceptable to me, I don't think anybody would be unhappy with these visuals either. And this shows us that using upscaling does open up the possibility to lower tier hardware to run the Pimax Crystal Light. 
Moving on to performance upscale, and you know the drill by now. Check the FPS, RAM, and GPU usage. No change to the FPS, it's 90 all the way of course. Less VRAM is needed than before, again, that is fully expected. As well as GPU usage is lower now, and there's no surprises here, and indeed the GPU wattage has dropped another 30 watts. There's a stack of untapped resource left on the table here, so we are going to try 120 hertz next. But first, I do want to describe to you the visual fidelity using performance upscale. The recorded footage doesn't exactly reflect what you see through the headset. The chances are you can't tell a difference between anything I've put up on screen so far, so it all looks pretty good. So all I can do is try to give you a sense by describing what I'm actually seeing. As more upscaling is used, there is a reduction in visual fidelity because the textures are based on lower resolution versions. Though if I were to drop you into this game and you had never experienced a Pimax Crystal Light, I don't think you'd actually be disappointed with how this game looks. It still remains decently detailed. I can even read the dashboard labels, they are clearly readable. There is edge shimmer on straight lines and this does get worse as you increase upscaling. So there is more edge shimmer with performance than there is with balanced and virtually none with the quality setting. It's mostly noticeable depending on the graphic element things are lined up to and if there's a big contrast uh, between those colors. Um, if you increase the in-game anti-aliasing you can for the most part eliminate shimmer. Compared to GT7 on a PlayStation with a VR2 headset, the Pimax Crystal Light using performance upscaling is still visually sharper in comparison, so completely usable, but it's always going to be better to use as little upscaling as possible. And now 120Hz. Performance upscale is used again here, and yes, we have achieved 120 FPS. It's completely doable. The frame rate dips ever so slightly for a moment when the cars bunch up around the opening sequence of corners, but I'm going to call this a success. It's able to hold a stable 120 FPS after that. I will say I'm perfectly happy with 90 hertz. So, you know, 120 hertz is not absolutely necessary. I'm not going to make any claims on that. When you're turning through corners, the trees, grandstands, basically any distant background scenery sweeping past rapidly, then you can tell 120 FPS is producing a smooth image. There's no difference I can tell between 90 and 120 for cars moving on track or the scenery when simply going down a straight. It's just the motion of the background when you turn through corners and those extra frames provide an enhancement to the motion. So don't stress that you are missing out on anything um, on that measure. Uh, you're absolutely fine with 90 hertz and 90 fps. This experiment was simply a study to test the capability of the upscaling algorithm and share this with you. 120 FPS in VR is not a game changer as far as I'm concerned, but the Pimax upscaling is most definitely a game changer that can easily transform the game performance from a simple button press. And the downgrade to the visuals is surprisingly reasonable. It's a trade-off that doesn't spoil the enjoyment. To keep this all simple, I used only the presets, but you can also opt for a custom setting to manually apply the upscaling level. And when you're trying to optimize your game, then you should look to use this uh, entirely to fine tune the balance. Before I sign this one off, I have one final test to show you. Automobilista 2, racing with rain and at night. Someone mentioned in the past comment that AMS2 runs like a dog in these challenging conditions in VR. So I wanted to see what I could manage. Reverting back to 90 hertz and still running performance upscaling. Okay, we didn't get 90 FPS, but at times getting pretty damn close. I think if I took a swipe at a couple of the in-game graphic settings, or maybe simply turning the image quality down a touch in the Pimax Play app, would be enough to do the trick. Yeah, we're really close, so I don't think there would be any difficulty getting there. Well, there you have it. I had fun with this one, and the opportunity to make a video while racing in VR with my Pimax Crystal Lights is a good day for me. Thanks for watching guys, happy simming, and bye bye for now.